If the Bible was written by men, how would we be able to trust it? Today on Ignite Fire, we have Dr. David Bowen back again, and he's going to be talking to us why the Bible is trustworthy and why we should put our faith in it. So thank you, David, for joining us again today. It's an honor to have you back. And so let's go ahead and get into this podcast. Well, I want to hear you tell me that's a good question. How do you know the answer to that? <laughs> it, I think it has something to do with biblical prophecy. It does. You know, <laughs> you hear those kind of comments. Well, how can you trust the Bible? You know, the Bible is written by a bunch of men over... over X amount of period, and, and it was written so long ago. How do you know that what Jesus talked about hasn't been changed by men? And mm -hmm. I'm not going to trust the Bible because of that. Mm -hmm. It's interesting. Good question. Needs mm -hmm. an answer. So the, the real key to it, again, is the Bible itself is outside of time. <laughs> See, when you look at this and say it was written by a bunch of men, we don't know. There's no, we don't know what's going on, and yeah. there's been so much fulfilled prophecy to the minor detail mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that, again, God is not restricted by time. Mm -hmm. We look at this and say, okay, we, we live in a box. Yeah. You know, we have calendars, we have clocks. There is no clocks in heaven. We look there through, is no time. Through, a, through a glass dimly. Right. right. So God sees beginning and end. He sees the whole thing. Mm -hmm. So he, the prophecy to him is just telling the story. Mm -hmm. But he's using man to tell the story. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, you look at evangelism. Why does God use us? I mean, he has angels. He has miracles. He has so many things he could use. He could appear <laughs> himself, but yet he uses you and I, the weakest vessels, uh -huh. because he gets the most glory by doing that, by using the weakest vessels. But yes. It's written by a bunch of men. Well, how do we know that the Holy Spirit, you know, talked to, the, to the, these men? And how about the Apocrypha and other books that were written? What about the Gospel of Thomas? Mm -hmm. You know, what about Third Peter? Yeah. Well, they were using those names, but they weren't written by that. And how mm -hmm. do we know they weren't inspired by... How, how do we know this book is inspired and that book's not? Mm -hmm. Another good question. How do we know that? Mm -hmm. Well, history tells us that, but... What does the Word say, and yeah. did it come to be? We have enough history now. We can look back. You and I can look back oh, yeah. and know exactly if it happened or not. Mm -hmm. This stuff, so in the future, is going to happen. But how could, how could Isaiah have known what was going to happen? How could Daniel mm -hmm. have known what was going to happen? In fact, critics mm -hmm. say Isaiah was not written by one man, but by three. Really? People look at Daniel and say, Daniel wasn't written during the time of Daniel. It was written in the Maccabean period because so much happened then. Mm -hmm. Well, that's what critics will say. Human reasoning. Oh, I didn't realize that. Yeah, that makes because sense. Because it's so accurate, yeah, they're thinking it was yeah, written later. So I, yeah, so, yeah, Daniel wasn't written by Daniel. Ah. All right, then Jesus is a liar. <laughs> because Daniel, he does talk in third person until yeah. chapter 7. But from chapter 7 on, he talks in first person. Mm -hmm. Ezekiel confirmed that Daniel wrote it, but the key to me is Jesus. Mm -hmm. Jesus says, as Daniel said. Mm. So Jesus confirms, as Jonah said. Yeah. Jesus confirms the writers of that. Mm -hmm. If it was just men writing it, would Jesus confirm that? Mm -hmm. So we do, because of Jesus, we know Daniel wrote Daniel. Yeah. So why do they say it was written in the Maccabean period, that, that 400 years? Because it all came true. Daniel had no way of knowing. Yeah. yeah. He was long gone by then. And people don't want to believe. I mean, there's it, it just like, to be frank and honest, there's a lot of people that don't want to change their lives. They don't want to, if there is a God and there is only one way to heaven and I have to set my pride aside, that might mean I'm wrong. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people don't want to admit that they're wrong and right. that they have to uh, to submit to a higher authority. Right. You know, it bothered me for a long time. I enjoy going out and look at the stars. Mm -hmm. And I tell this all the time. Do you enjoy, do you enjoy stars? Oh, I love them. Yeah, I you love go them. out, you get away from concrete, you get out in the desert, you look up, mm -hmm. and it's amazing to see the stars. Oh, yeah. How many words do we have about the stars in Genesis at the time of creation? Oh. Put, put you on the spot? I, I, <laughs> I'm drawing the blank yeah, other than, yeah. than Abraham. Many people do. Well, before, yeah. I mean, this is the Genesis 1, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. verse 16, I believe it is. Five words. Really? And all it says was, and he created the stars too. Oh. That's it. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Those are pretty cool. He creates them. He sustains them, you know, and he all we get is... is he created them too. Is he created them too. And Psalms tells us he knows them by name. Yeah. He's yeah. named every star, you yeah. know, but yet we get five words. But then, mm. okay, I, I, okay I, I, I will deal with that. But then you start looking in the Torah, the first five books of the Bible, uh -huh. and you have chapter after chapter after chapter after chapter about the tabernacle. Mm-hmm. We know where it was, who could touch it, who couldn't touch it. We know what it was made out of. We know the dimensions. We know... Why? And mm -hmm. then you get into the priesthood. We know anything about the priesthood. We know the garments he wore. We knew his <laughs> calling. We knew the we, with the family. And then you get into the Sabbath and the festivals. We yeah. know the time, the date. The, why do we have chapter after chapter after chapter about the tabernacle, the priesthood, the sacrifice system? Do we care what kind of animal had to be sacrificed and when it had to be sacrificed? And why do we care about all that stuff? But 
I enjoy the stars and I get five words. I know. I, I kind of fell asleep when I went through Leviticus and <laughs> in class. I'm but, like, what, what are we doing here? <laughs> but here's the answer. God cares about relationship. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And it's all about relationship. Yeah. Because in the garden, when it's, when it's perfect, man sins and sin separates us from God. Now, Breaks the relationship. So sinfulness and holiness cannot come together. Mm -hmm. So Moses go to Mount Sinai, and people think he just got the Ten Commandments. That's mm -hmm. all he got. Well, no, he also got the sacrifice system, the mm -hmm. priesthood, the tabernacle, because God's going to say, this is how you're going to come worship me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is where you're going to come worship me, the tabernacle. Mm -hmm. This is when you're going to come worship me, the Sabbath and the festivals. Mm -hmm. This is who and how, you know, the priesthood and the prophets and so on and so forth. I will speak to you through prophets. You will speak back to me through priest. Mm -hmm. So God gave him everything so that sinful man can come and worship a holy God mm -hmm. without the tabernacle, Without everything else, there is no way. And every aspect of it points towards Jesus. Mm. When you look at the tabernacle, what's inside of it? First of all, there's only one gate in. Mm -hmm. And we we're told where all the tribes, all the clans were told to line up. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. if, if, if the tabernacle is here and your clan is way over here, wouldn't it be easy to have a back door or a side door? <laughs> yeah. You know, wouldn't that make sense? Yeah. But there's only one. Why? So I have to, if, you're, if your tent's here, you can walk right there. But I got to come all the way around. Mm -hmm. Why? Because Jesus says he's the only way. Oh. And then John, the, the Gospel of John, there's seven I am statements. John doesn't have parables. He has I am statements. Uh -huh. I am what? I am the bread. I am the light. I am the way. Mm -hmm. What's inside the, the tabernacle? And when you get into the Holy Land, you have the light. Mm -hmm. You have the bread. You have the prayer. Mm -hmm. And the Holy of Holies is the curtain there. Where you, well, only you, you can't get into the Holy of Holies. Mm -hmm. Jesus dies on the cross, and what happens? It. From top to bottom, mm -hmm. meaning God opened it up, so yeah. you and I have access to that now. Yes. But everything in the tabernacle points to Jesus. Mm -hmm. Everything in the priesthood points to Jesus. Everything in the sacrifice points to Jesus. I ask people, you know, Jesus' baptism. You know, mm -hmm. people, this dove. Everybody looks at the dove. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. he was baptized, and the dove was there, right? Yeah. It's also a voice that came from heaven. Oh yeah. Do you remember what it said? Uh, this is my son, who uh, who I'm in, I'm well pleased. Yes, at the uh, Mount Tabor on the Transfiguration, Jesus is there, and, and Jim, Pete, and John are up there with him. You know, the guys are there with him, and, and they look up, and there's Moses and Elijah. And, yeah, you know, the, and they he, want to build the tent. They want yeah. to build the uh, yeah. <laughs> altars. Yeah, they're heading down to this feast of tabernacles, so they stop. Well, let's build tabernacles here. We'll stay here, party. Moses is here, cool. Um, but he sees Jesus in his glory, and again, the voice comes from above. They're heading towards Jerusalem, mm -hmm. the feast of tabernacles. The voice is the same thing. What is the importance of those two times? Go back to the sacrifice system. Uh -huh. God said that you had to, he had to accept your sacrifice. Mm -hmm. So if you're going to do a burnt offering, if you're going to bring a bull in, I just talked about this on Sunday in church, you can bring a bull in, you got this bull over here that's lame, mm -hmm. call him Bruce. All right. So I'm going to bring, God wants me to sacrifice a bull. Bruce is over here. I'm not using him anymore. I bring Bruce in. Mm -hmm. Well, God says, no, I don't want Bruce. I want the one, this one. Well, if I bring you that one, that's my livelihood. I need mm. that one. This sacrifice has to cost you something. It had to be the best. Well, it's not a sacrifice. So, and you look at Cain and Abel, what happened? God received one, rejected mm -hmm. one. Mm -hmm. Okay, so when the voice came from heaven, mm -hmm. what God said was, this sacrifice, I accept. Mm. This sacrifice, Jesus, my son, this is, is gonna, the one. Is going to be a sacrifice. Mm -hmm. And I, this is holy goosebumps, and I accept him. Yeah. So both the baptism, when he begins his public ministry, and up in Mount Tabor, when he's going to Jerusalem for the last time, mm -hmm. when he's going to head down to the, to the cross, I accept this sacrifice. Mm. All of that, everything in the Old Testament, all the chapters after chapters after chapters mm -hmm. of the tabernacle, the priesthood, the sacrifice, the sa all points mm -hmm. to Jesus. And so pretty cool, too, is with the tabernacle, again, you have the clans, the tribes all set up. We, we didn't have satellite back then, mm -hmm. but had we had a satellite over the tabernacle, it would have made a cross. Oh wow! The way the tribes are set up, because they were told where they could where they could where they yeah. could line up. Wow! And ha if you had a satellite, you would have had a picture <laughs> of the cross back there. So, but everything back then points to Jesus. Yeah. So, how do you say Jesus is the only way? Well, He's the gate. He is the only way in. Yeah. Not yeah. other religions and everything else. And then people say, "What well, doesn't matter who you pray to." Well, other gods, <laughs> yeah. all you had to do was appease them. There was no life yeah. change required. And there are other gods out there. They just are not the God. Right. There's, there's no hope. <laughs> yeah. There's no hope with those gods. Mm -hmm, so, mm -hmm. so when you say Bible was written by a bunch of men, well, yeah, God used men. Mm -hmm. But all the prophecy and everything he said, you and I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow, let alone 100 years from now mm -hmm. or 1,000 years from now. The things that was written in the, in the Bible, 
haven't even happened yet. Yeah. And they're still coming. But how do they know? Well, God said, this is what's going to happen. And we're watching it all line up. It's it's all unfolding right in front yeah. of us, just yeah. like the book describes. Yeah. yeah. And Jesus is the center of it all. Yeah. This sacrifice I receive. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You can't use human reasoning saying, I think this means, but you really understand it. And when you get into the when you really get into the weeds, it's mm-hmm. it's pretty easy to understand. The book of Revelation, people mm-hmm. get afraid of. And, and the book, well, it's symbolism, it's all this stuff. I can't understand. It's scary. God gives us promises. In fact, mm-hmm. the very, chapter one, verse three, there's a double blessing. Would God offer us a blessing and make it difficult to understand? No, not at all. So how do you understand the book of Revelation? It's all explained in the Old Testament, mm. word by word. You know, you have the woman who's pregnant, and she has the moon and the stars and, and everything else. Well, who is that? Well, mm-hmm. we know it's Israel. How do you know? Go back to Joseph's dream. Mm-hmm. When Joseph had a dream, you know, Jacob understood. He says, mm-hmm. you're talking about your mother, you're talking about me, and, and the stars are your brothers. <laughs> Any Jewish person is going to heed that and go all the way back to Joseph. That's what he's talking about. Mm. Well, Jacob becomes Israel. Israel's yeah. birthing the Messiah, and that's what's happening there. And once that happens, the dragon wants to kill him, which goes back to Herod, the killing mm-hmm. of the babies in mm-hmm. Bethlehem. I mean, it all just ties together when you understand it in context. Yeah, yeah. And Revelation's all explained in the Old Testament. You went back to Joseph there. Mm-hmm. You know, it says, when you look at Revelation, it says, he who has ears, let him hear. Mm-hmm. Okay, well. What does that mean? It just means listen, dude. Don't mm-hmm. be stupid. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. what you and I think, right? <laughs> to a Jewish person, you go back to Moses and being on Mount Ebal and Mount Gerizim. He led all of Israel up there and he read the law, Deuteronomy 28, and mm-hmm. said, He who has ears, let him hear. Oh. If you've listened to the law and you obey it, you'll be blessed. If you reject the law and disobey it, you will be cursed. Mm. If you have ears, listen to this. Don't miss this point. Yeah, yeah. In Revelation, it says, if you have ears, let them hear. So you take the context of what Moses said, you bring it over, and you said, oh, we need to pay attention to this. Wow, wow. You know, you said, oh, how the mighty have fallen in the book of Revelation. What does that mean to you and I? Mm-hmm. Uh, some Christians messed up or something happened. You know, yeah. some, some king did something. No, the Jewish ear is going to go back and say, King Saul. Mm-hmm. What did King Saul do? The spirit left Saul yeah. because he sinned. And the cry was, oh, how the, the mighty, mighty have fallen. fallen. Mm-hmm. So what did Saul do? He disobeyed God. Yeah. So what's the book of Revelation about? Talking about the disobedience. And the para- I mean, you look at the plagues of Egypt, you know, which attacked all the gods, of, not all the gods, there's many gods of Egypt, mm-hmm. but it attacked some of the gods of Egypt. Yeah. You go back to the trouble. I mean, they parallel everything. Mm-hmm. So I, I kind of, I, I joke with my wife, you know, she likes to watch the movies and the, the girls and the, 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 the love stories and everything else. Yeah, yeah. You walk in and go, yeah, they're going to get married, they're going to get married, end of the movie, you know? But <laughs> what would happen if you were really into a TV show or into a movie or into a podcast? Uh-huh. You know, and it's going an hour, two hours, whatever it is, and someone walks in at the last few minutes, mm-hmm. and they, they don't understand the plot, they don't understand the characters, they don't understand what's happening, and they start asking all kinds of questions. Mm-hmm. Well, who is that? Well, why are they doing that? What, wouldn't you politely say, just shut up? <laughs> we'll talk about aside, later. Step yeah, aside. Yeah, it's just stop. <laughs> yeah. You know, you don't, you haven't, but yet you have to watch the whole movie to understand the end. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We open the book of Revelation and want to understand it as it is without reading the rest of the Bible. Gotcha. Gotcha. And everything in Revelation is explained in great detail in the old, throughout the Old mm-hmm, Testament. Mm-hmm. All the symbolism, everything else is there, and it's explained in the Old Testament. Mm-hmm. This is what this means. This is what this means. Daniel has dreams. What prophecy, oftentimes, well, prophecy is, is twofold. Mm-hmm. It's for the original audience, but mm-hmm. it's also for a future audience. Yeah. And many times, all the prophet does, he, he, he will see, he will talk about what he sees. He might not even know what he's talking many about. Many times he's he just, doesn't. He's just... He needs, it. he needs an interpreter. Mm-hmm. So an angel, many times an angel will come in and interpret. Mm-hmm. It happens with Daniel all the time. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, what does this mean? What does this mean? You know, and the angel will explain it to you. Mm-hmm. Now, you mentioned about being pre-tribulation or when, when going through the rapture. Mm-hmm. Well, another thing that really gets me is in the tribulation time, mm-hmm. um, you know, John is, is, is brought into heaven. Mm-hmm. And we talk about Jesus being worthy. Well, why is he worthy? Well, mm-hmm. he's the Messiah. He died for us. No, he's worthy because he, he could open the, the seals. He could break the mm-hmm. seals. He could open the deed to the earth. Mm-hmm. But John's up there, and, and when we get to the fifth seal, all the martyrs. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we ask, who are they? When, when, when are we? <laughs> well, who are, no, who are they? And the answer is, you know who they are. They came out of the tribulation period. He does not say they're the church. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. He says, these are the ones, the people who died for their faith came out of the tribulation period. Mm-hmm. There is no church people there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if the church is going through tribulation, wouldn't you say that's the church? Now, could those be the people, too, around the world that are today that are, that are dying and being martyred for their faith? Well, they're going to be in heaven already. These are people who are who you see at the altar, who who are under, under the fifth seal underneath mm-hmm, the altar. Mm-hmm, they mm-hmm. see them, and the question is asked, well, who are they? Well, these are the ones that came out of the tribulation period. Mm-hmm. You know who they are. They came out of the tribulation period, mm-hmm. which means they were not believers yeah. beforehand. Where's all the believers? They were raptured out. 
So does Christ come back two times? Does he come back for his church and then comes back to conquer? He does not come back to earth for the church. That's why we're called into the air. Gotcha, gotcha. You know, well, the word rapture is not in the Bible. Neither is the word trinity, neither is the word divinity. Mm-hmm. You know, so and there's so, so much debate right. on that, too. Right, so Jeez but it is, it is Latin, in the Latin word. You know, so it is there with the with the Latin word, mm-hmm. but it we're called into into the clouds. So mm-hmm. Jesus calls us home. He so he calls us out. When we come, we come back with him. Okay. So who's all the saints that come back with him? We have angels and saints. So who are the saints who come back with him? Mm-hmm. You know, the Old Testament saints don't get raptured up until after the tribulation period. Mm-hmm. So it's not the Old Testament saints. So who's coming back with him when he returns? Mm-hmm. The rapture church. Yeah. Yeah. So you put again, you put all those elements together. That's why I believe in a pre-tribulation rapture. Yeah, gotcha, gotcha. But was it written by a bunch of men? Couldn't be, because man, we don't even know what's going to happen. You know, what are you having for lunch? <laughs> they were tomorrow? divinely inspired. Yeah, they what are you having for breakfast? Inspired. What are you having for lunch? We don't know, you know. But God knew everything. So tell me this: what, what is the the likelihood, or where are the odds of even one prophecy coming true? Oh, there was a, a mathematician who did this, Peter Starrow. Starrow, Starrow. Um, and he talked about the state of Texas. Uh-huh. He said, what if you took silver dollars mm-hmm. and you, you just painted a red spot on one of them mm-hmm. and you filled the state of Texas knee high with the silver dollars and you put somebody in a helicopter and you flew them over and they told you where to stop <laughs> and they jumped out and they picked up one coin. What's the odd of them picking up that one coin with the red dot on it? <laughs> That's, it doesn't even seem you know, fathomable. Yeah. That's just the odds of someone being able to fulfill prophecies, like like the, the odds of someone being able to do it. Just, if eight prophecies could be fulfilled, it mm-hmm. would be that kind of mathematician. It's impossible. Wow, wow. And Jesus fulfilled, you know, many more than that. Yeah. So those scriptures are dead on with that. Do you do you know how many biblical prophecies have already come to pass? Well, it depends on your theology. Oh, okay. What okay. is the rapture? Yeah. <laughs> What, what, you know, again, people have different theologies yeah. for that, but there's over a hundred that Jesus fulfilled himself. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, so the, yeah. it's impossible for the odds to that. I think it was, I think it was one, one hundredth to the 17th power or something like that. The number is just, it's like 17 zeros after that. Mm-hmm. So I, you can't even call what the number is. Yeah. That's the odds of it. So can you tell me then, if there's over a hundred prophecies that Jesus fulfilled with his time here, mm-hmm. what is the, misunderstanding or the block from the Jewish people believing that Uh, Jesus is the Messiah. This is great. There are nine expectations of the Messiah coming Uh you find in the Old Testament, Zechariah and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. Well, they they will use these for a checkpoint on Mm -hmm. to see if the Messiah is there. So the first one is that there has to be oppression. Okay. Okay. When Jesus was there, yeah, the Romans were oppressing the Jews. Mm-hmm. Okay, check. Okay. Number two, there has to be a forerunner. Mm-hmm. That's what has, someone has to come beforehand and announce the Messiah is coming. Mm-hmm. John the Baptist did that. Okay. And Elijah like forerunner. Okay. Mm-hmm. That's number two. Number three, he has to claim to be the Messiah himself. Mm-hmm. Did Jesus do that? Yes, he did. So number four is the world has to attack and come after Jerusalem. It has mm-hmm. to attack and come after Israel. Did that happen? <laughs> yes. When Jesus died, that who, who attacked? It wasn't the Romans. No, the Romans controlled it. In fact, the Romans didn't want to put him to death. Mm-hmm. There's another. One that's a great one. Why? Why was he crucified? The, the, we off track, but mm-hmm. the Jewish form of capital punishment. He was committed of committing blasphemy. Was a capital punishment crime. He stoned, right? So why was he crucified? We'll get that in a minute. Mm-hmm. But these nine, there's nine, there's nine points from Scripture that Jews are looking for. Mm-hmm. And then not only will, will the world attack, but Jerusalem will be the center of the world. The Messiah will protect Jerusalem. There will be peace that will reign around the world. Mm-hmm. Did any of that happen with Jesus? <laughs> no. So he cannot be the Messiah. What they're missing is the church age. Mm-hmm. So between three and four, between him claiming to be the Messiah and the fourth one, between everybody, Jerusalem being attacked and so on and so forth, you put the church age in there, mm-hmm. and then Jesus fulfills everything. Mm. All nine are fulfilled. Yeah. And that's why they say in Zechariah, in the end, they're going to say that he was the Messiah. And they will cry as if they had the death of their firstborn. Wow. They will be mourning so loud. And mm-hmm. they, they will wail because they missed it. Yeah. And that's Romans 9, 10, and 11. So know, that, that moment is coming. That every knee will bow, every knee mm-hmm. will, will bow, and every tongue will confess. Mm-hmm. I have a good friend who's a, a Messianic Jew, mm-hmm. and he says... He used to get so bad at Christians because we're excited about the rapture. Mm-hmm. We're excited about end times. Mm-hmm. He says, why are you so excited about that? And we go, well, <laughs> Jesus is coming back. Why could you not be? He says, because my people, mm-hmm. two-thirds of them will die. Wow. 
how are you excited about two thirds of my people dying? That's Zechariah. Yeah. Zechariah says two thirds of the Jewish people won't survive. Only wow. a third will survive. So he says, so what you're telling me is that you're excited about two thirds of my people being put to death. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And he was obviously very upset about this. Yeah, yeah. His wife put him aside one time and said, sweetheart. Hey, we got, you got to have a good wife. You, you got to thank God. Yeah. God, thank you for Amen. our wives. And she said, sweetheart, it's not a number. It's a percentage. So all we need to do is win more Jews to Christ oh, and lower that percentage. His better half spoke. You bet. <laughs> Again, there's the Holy Goosebumps, you know, because, yeah. uh, you know, if you look at the, at the tribulation period, it's so bad. People don't understand it. it at one, when you look at the judgments, there's three sets of seven judgments. In one, a third of the world's going to die. Another one, a quarter of the world won't survive. Mm-hmm. All right, if it happened today, mm-hmm. I'm not saying it. If it happened today, there's mm-hmm. eight billion people in the world. Mm-hmm. Okay, in the first four plagues, the first four seals, a quarter of the world's gone. So what's a quarter of 8 billion? Jeez. 2 billion. Yeah. Okay, so now you go from 8 billion to 6 billion. Mm-hmm. And then later on, you have a third. What's a third of 6? 2 more billion. Mm-hmm. So which tells us that if it were to happen now, in the seven-year period were to begin now, 8 billion people would be down to 4 billion people. Mm-hmm. Half the world will not survive. Yeah, yeah. That's how serious it is. Yeah. And people don't understand that. Yeah, that's, that's, that's crazy. Then uh, that Bill Gates would be happy. Because we'd have, you know, those well, you, you, smaller populations. You had the, yeah, 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 the World Economic Forum saying, this is our plan. Yeah, you that's know? what we need. We're Bible scholars. This is our plan, <laughs> you know. But yeah, but that's, that's because of the judgment and wrath of God. What are they going to die from? The judgment and wrath of God. Mm-hmm. It's interesting. What the Bible says, the way they're going to die is what those people are trying to do. Plagues and disease and so on and so on. And there's ever other, you know, but that war and, and fall. It is yeah. everything they talked about, they're talking about that. Wow. But but let's get back to Jesus. Okay? Yes, yes, Why yes. was he crucified? Well, I mean, when the when the when the Pharisees brought him up, it mm-hmm. was for claiming to be equal or the son of God. That's right? the, that's the that's the charge. That's blasphemy. Yeah. to claim to be God. Mm-hmm. The Romans want nothing to do with that. That's yeah. a that's a that's a civil matter. It's a religious matter. Now, could they not crucify him because they were under Roman rule? Correct. Only the Romans could crucify. Uh, him. And the Romans do it very publicly, so they say, if you mess up, this could be you. Mm-hmm. You know, so, so they wanted a very public trial. That's for, what crucifixions for are for. Yeah, it was, it was the harshest of criminals. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So Pilate wanted nothing to do with it. The mm-hmm. Romans wanted nothing to do with it. But the the Pharisees had to get Jesus crucified. Mm. Why? It, De- Deuteronomy twenty one. He is hung on a tree. Is cursed by God. That's right. So if you look at okay, Jesus, if we stone him to death, he becomes a martyr. His mo- movement might become mm-hmm. bigger. However, if he's cursed by God. It ends mm-hmm. his movement, mm-hmm. and the Pharisees wanted him done away with. Mm-hmm. You know, in the, on the Mount of uh, on the Mount of uh, Beatitudes, when he talked about the Beatitudes, the Sermon on the Mount, Matthew six mm-hmm. through eight, when he ta- when he uh, Matthew uh, five, I'm sorry, when he talked about the, the Beatitudes, the people were amazed as a teaching. Why were they amazed? Because they never heard such truth. Yeah, and the Pharisees got upset with that. You know, so they had to have him crucified because then they would say he's cursed by God, and that ends his ministry. Uh, what they weren't counting on was the resurrection. Yeah. Yeah, that ruined everything. <laughs> yeah, they, when when you when you had one job, <laughs> yeah, they they wanted him to just have one job, yeah. and that was it. Just stay yeah. dead. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, and the Romans are trying to do it, but yeah. yeah so, but, but it goes back to Deuteronomy saying, if you hung on a tree on a cross, yeah, you're cursed by God. That's actually one of my favorite scriptures in Galatians three thirteen. Uh, uh, cursed is he who hangs on a tree. Yeah, which Paul repeats. Yeah. Uh huh. Uh huh. And then. Uh, um, for, for he became a curse for us. Yes. And I love that because... See in, how it all comes together? Yes, yes. And then and then again, uh, what was it in Matthew when he started healing the sick? Um, or, or, and, it, and that connects with uh, Isaiah 53, or mm-hmm. 54. Uh, he cared our sicknesses, he bore our pains, and by his stripes we're healed. And it's interesting that, that I always wondered, because when he hung on the tree, he accomplished you know, what he needed to do. Why did he need the whipping? But he had to fulfill Isaiah uh, 53. Mm-hmm. Those stripes, they had to come. The payment had to come mm-hmm. for our healing. And uh, I, 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 and I think that that one's one of the, the the coolest things for me. Being you know, oh, uh, you know, in a Pentecostal and all this, mm-hmm. I took Galatians. I did a study that I haven't done before, and I'm gonna I'm actually gonna share this uh, on another podcast. But I took Galatians 3:13 that he hung on the tree, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, because he became a curse for us. Mm-hmm. He redeemed us from the curse of the law. Then I went to Deuteronomy mm-hmm. 28, mm-hmm. and I went through all, all of the, the curse curses. of the law, yeah. and I was with so much joy and ecstatic because 
all of these curses that were presented for disobeying the law are tremendous. Mm -hmm. And uh, me being an advocate for healing, I, I found where it said that every sickness and every disease that's not even written mm -hmm. in this book mm -hmm. is part of the curse of the law. And you know, there's been people that 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 don't believe in, in that it's always God's will to heal. I said, is it always God's will to fulfill His word? Mm -hmm. And they will say yes. I said, look at Galatians three thirteen. Now look at Deuteronomy twenty eight, and tell me what does that say? Jesus died to redeem us from that curse, mm -hmm. and He brought us to Himself. Mm -hmm. And uh, and, and it's 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 been a it was that's been a cool study for myself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so so I love. Uh, uh, confirming scripture with scripture. Scripture interprets scripture. Yes, yes. Yeah. I mean, how could Jesus be fully God and fully man? Which was he? And mm -hmm. why did, Why both? Yeah, yeah. You know, so he comes out of heaven. Could you imagine being in heaven when Jesus is there mm -hmm. and have him leave? <laughs> Who the, where are you going? I'll be back, you know? What yeah, are you doing? Yeah. You know, he can't leave. He, he comes to earth, and, and, you know, he's here 30, you know, 30 years or so, 33, whatever it was. Um, uh, Nothing in heaven time, you know, yeah, yeah. A, a minute and a second in heaven time, you know, <laughs> but still. But why fully God and fully man? Mm -hmm. You know, he had to be man to die because God mm -hmm. can't die, but he had to be able to cover our sins to be God. Mm -hmm. That's why he's God, and man can't do that. So in order to cover our sins and to die, he had to be fully God and fully man. Yeah, yeah. Philippians 2, you know, kenosis. There's a there's an interesting study that I that I, I haven't broke into. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm really haven't had the time to get into it, but I was hearing somebody talk about the covenants that God made with man mm -hmm. and the covenant that God made with Abraham mm -hmm. and had, when he put him to sleep and, mm -hmm. and, and the Cut spirit the of... was in half. Yes, and, mm -hmm. and, and according, and you can probably uh, elaborate more on this, but according to the, their covenants is whoever broke the covenant... May what happened to them happen to you. Yes, mm -hmm. and so God said, I will become you mm -hmm. because you've broken my covenant and I will take whatever was supposed to happen to you I'll take it on for myself. Yeah, well, it's an unconditional covenant. We yeah, Abraham had nothing to do with it. Yeah. So, and because of that, yeah, but God said when you when you, you cut animals, you kill animals, cut them in half, and you walk, and the two yeah. the two partners would walk through it and would say, "If I break my word with you, my promise, my covenant is a promise. Yeah. If I break my promise, may what happened to me, what happened to them, happen to me. Yes, yes. But when he put Abraham to sleep. It was God's unconditional covenant. I mean, yes. Abraham had no role in it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, so, yeah. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, and that's and then and then so so when Christ died on on the cross, uh, he was dying mm -hmm. with that old covenant mm -hmm. to give us a new covenant, mm -hmm. which is better than the old. Yeah, Jeremiah thirty one. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. I just enjoy talking scripture and, and it's, okay. especially when people you can really get into it deep mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. it becomes very clear. Yes. It's unconditional and it, you cannot you cannot argue with it because it's like, wow, that's what that means. I never saw that before. Mm -hmm, I love mm -hmm. it when the light bulbs go off. That's why I enjoy teaching. Oh yeah. You know, oh, and yeah. so on and so forth. But yeah. I like it when my light bulb goes <laughs> on because it's a tremendous deal for me when I finally I'm like, oh, okay, that makes sense now. Yeah. So thank you. A couple of those have have gone on today in my <laughs> mind. And uh, and I hope that has happened to you, those who are watching. And guys, uh, uh, if you guys have any comments, any questions, go ahead and leave those down in the comment section of this video. Don't forget to like, subscribe, hit the notification button, and go ahead and check out the description. We're going to have all the links for Dr. David in the description, so that way you guys can follow him and check out his stuff. He has uh, He's a tremendous teacher, and just like the light bulb has gone on in my head, <laughs> I know that it will do that same for you. So guys, go ahead and interact with us. Until next time, we love you. God loves you. And God bless. God bless you.